I, I hope you don't get indigestion from all this. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but you're going to get it in any case. <laughs> this picture is twice that size. Uh, it's in a, a, a gallery in England. Uh, then again, I was influenced by Wallace. I was making my ideas of looking across the... You know, when you stand on a, a hilltop, uh, in the old Renaissance where you look through a vision file and you see it like that. But while you're there, you're conscious of your feet. You're conscious of something happening over there. You're conscious of the sky there. You're conscious of something else like that. How do you fetch all those elements and make a new way of looking at art? That's what it's about. And that's what I was struggling with. So these ones, this is, this is uh, acrylic again. So it's taking just simple shapes and organizing them into, into my pictures, not somebody else's. Uh, not giving homage to someone else. These are my pictures. Let's do well, this, this, this is a fascinating one for me, this one. Um, uh, this is a painting I did on the beach uh, in Chichester in Sussex in, in England. And I was painting this picture on the beach of these things. And the wind blew my canvas off the easel and it fell into the sand. <laughs> well, you know, I went to pick it up, you know, like, like, you know, like, like this. Then when I picked it up and I saw the sand stuck in the paint, I liked it. <laughs> I said, why on earth am I trying to use oil paint to make it look like sand? Why not use the sand itself? Why not use the landscape in the picture? So at that time, because I'd learned about gums and all that, I then started to use sand in my picture making inside. So I've always liked that one because what you see is sand there, is sand. <laughs> and, and the rest is painted. But I learned a lot from that. So I learned how, and also what was great, you know, when you're a painter, sometimes you lose what a potter might do, or you lose what a sculptor might do. You love the idea of, of cutting back. And I learned from using acrylics, uh, and thick, thick acrylics, I could get a, a knife point and I could cut and gouge into the paint, which is another form of drawing, but you're cutting in. And I, bit by time I learned that if I, if I went and gouged into the, the acrylic too early, the paint filled in. But if I wait it was the right temperature, I could cut into it and it would remain like a ploughed field. It remained when I cut into it. And this is what I was interested in. And the next slide please. And you can see on that one. That's one that's when I started to use the sand. The only thing left in that picture from my previous vision is the horizon line. That line along the top. You know, I always tell students Learn about the horizon line and then forget it. Because it doesn't exist. We talk about horizon lines, a lot in infinity. There was, a, there was an architect called Brunelensky who invented the thing called perspective because he wanted to prove mathematically how you could organize space. But in reality, it, it doesn't exist. If you go up in an aircraft, you're not going to see a, you're not going to see a horizon line. It doesn't exist. It was a manufactured thing to try and create space in a picture, which architects use. But in reality, it doesn't exist. It goes on and on and on and on. So, so the top piece is the horizon now, where the rest, so the rest of that picture comes out to meet you. It's, it's coming off, off the canvas into your space. But the background is be, behind there. And, and the, next please. And these are sort of things which I've got... As a painter of today, not yesterday, of today, these are the interest me. And then you can see how wonderful the sand was. This one is in a, a, a museum in Berlin. And uh, this is one where you can see I've used the sand, but I've also I, I've enjoyed cutting into it with a with a with a with a knife or a. a, a, a I, I have, my father once gave me an old arrowhead. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's got marked jags on it, so when you cut into it, it makes its own mark. If I used a nail, it makes a modern mark. 
it makes a crystal sharp mark. If I use the arrowhead, it makes a primitive mark. And that's what I like. So these ones were uh, things, things like that. And then in this one, I could never get the right red. So the red in the corner is a bit of cloth. Because I couldn't find the right red. But I found it in a piece of cloth. And I thought by putting the cloth on, it also goes well with the sand. So this, the, the, same, the same language is what you try to do. And that's about that size, the picture. It's in, it's in Berlin. Next, next one. Now you can see how I look at the landscape now. Um, um, I like, it's part of me. I, I come from a Celtic culture. Scottish, Irish, Welsh, what you would call it. And when I was living as a young boy uh, in Hartlepool, um, where I told you the Vikings used to raid, and also the Romans used to come up on the beaches because there was no roads. I got fascinated by prehistory. I love prehistory. And I once went to Mexico to look, to look at uh, uh, their civilizations. Uh, I, I enjoy look, looking back to come forward. Uh, I remember going to Mexico and seeing uh, for the first time uh, the, the, the architecture and the buildings there. Uh, and compared to Rome, Rome was, a, Rome was just a little village. Compared to what you see in Mexico City, in Tutankhamen. Um, you know, so so I, I got faster. So I like to gouge into the things. And so instead of drawing on the top, which I always was good at with the, the paintbrush, and dexterity like fencing with a paintbrush, I then start to gouge into it with a knife and a sharp instrument. And I leave marks like this. And you see marks like that. I can go in parts of uh, uh, Ontario where you can see where the, 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 native, the, the native Indians made marvellous marks on the wall. And if you go to uh, Writing on Stone Park in Alberta, you can see pectographs which the early people draw on. And I like that enormously. And I like to fetch that into my pictures because it's part of my heritage. Next one. And there, there, there's some more. So you can see it was changing now. So th now the, the, the language is simpler. Um, it's my own personal language now. It's my language. Nobody else's. Um, and uh, th there's a different types of sand. I used to go to, uh, to France and come back with different types of sand. <laughs> and when I used to come through the customs, I think they thought I was fetching hashish. In, 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 in. But there again, Mao's are getting sand from a certain place. You know, it's, it's, it's part of it. It's part of the landscape. And don't forget, we are, we're not only water. We are part of the landscape as well. You know, um, I did a lot of research into a molecular structure and cancer research. You know, where, where, the, where the, the, the modules get out of order. Well, I got very fascinated with this. So these, these are ones, this also is in, in Germany. Next one, please. There's a one where I've, I've put a piece of wood into the picture. And that's got sand on it. And it was the piece, it, I had that piece of wood lying about my studio for a long time. Until I found out the right place to put it in the picture. Um, so in a way, I'm moving away from painting. And I'm also becoming, it's becoming like poetry. It's, you know, like poetry is once removed from literature on its own, and I think painting can also have poetry in it as well. Next. Now, this is my painting, the, the take of just a choir. It was donated. Um, <coughs> this is, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's about seven foot high and about four foot across, four and a half foot across. And it's, it's cloth. It's all sorts of cloth. This is my clothy period. <laughs> uh, uh, I used to go around the cathedrals where I used to live. I lived in a very historical part when I lived in Yorkshire. Because where I lived, there were three famous battlefields where I lived. There's, there's the one against the Vikings, there's the ones against the, uh, 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 Richard III, and also where Cromwell was. But when I used to go in the cathedrals, I used to go into where the military chapel was, you'd find battle flags hanging there. 
some from the Crimea, some from the Boer War, and some from Waterloo. And these flags were hanging there, and over time they started to deteriorate. But they become wonderful objects to look at. And I liked them, so I thought, well, I'm going to do something. So I know how old that picture is. I know that picture is exactly 50 years old because it was my, my son's diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Can I also say washed diapers? <laughs> and remember, my wife had all these diapers when, when I lived in Yorkshire hanging on the wall outside with some with third bird. Oh my God, they look like the flags in the cathedral. <laughs> So, I started off by building this with acrylic and using sand and other sorts of stone to make the image. And then I then stuck over the top the, um, the, the, uh, the, the cloth from the, the diaper, shall we say, and, and very tall, and then I put it together. That's about, that's about 50 year old now, that picture, and it's just as fresh as I did it. It's a moment. Uh, so, in, in next year when you go to Tate, you should see that one, I hope. <laughs> ha, ha, and this is on the floor, this is the on the floor. <laughs> but, you know, so I like the idea of all sorts of things happening. Don't be specific, I put the paint on. It's all, have, have fun. Picture making is fun. Try all sorts of things out. And in the end, you might not at the time know what happens, but you will. You see, if you're in painting, and you're trying to push outside the boundaries, you've got to give time for you to catch up. I generally do about four or five paintings at, the, at a time. And then I go to each one where I feel I can add to it, and where I can't. Or I, I go, like Alan Davies had a marvelous definition. Somebody said, when do you know when your picture's finished, Mr. Dunn? And he said, when my wife calls me for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like that, you know. In other words, if you work over the edge, it's no good answering it in the known. That's easy. You've got to answer it in the unknown. And you've got to take time to catch up to it. It's just like medical research. You've got to take time to catch up to it. Which chromosomes will do which and what? So that's, that's the story about that one. So I know... I didn't tell the Tate the background of it, <laughs> because they asked me in a paragraph the durability of the work. I thought, well, where did I say it? <laughs> then they start to change. Now, this will baffle you, this one. I call this one Worldscape, because there's no horizon line. It was, a, it's a, it was what I call a, a found object. And there's a lot of found objects in 20th century art. It's one of the main things in 20th century art. And I, what this was, was an old tablecloth. It was one of those American tablecloths which had black and white checks on it. Um, it had been on a table, and, and this is the underneath. On the table, when it, in its real life, it had jars of jam, tomato ketchup all sorts of things on it, which it perforated into the surface. So when I saw the other side, I saw the results of this, and it looked like a map from another world to me. So I called it Worldscape. But people make the mistake when they find a found object. Finding it is the main thing. For God's sake, don't try to make it into art, because it will destroy it. So what I did with this one, I said, I want to add to it, other than sticking it on a canvas. It's about twice that size, it's in my exhibition. What I said, well, I said, well, how can I add to it, but not with a capital A? And I suddenly realised, if you go to the telephone book, and you're looking for Mr. Smith, amongst all the Mr. Smiths, the one you identify with, you put a ring round it. Which means, that's the one I want, okay? So I thought, well, look, what I should do is put rings and marks round the pieces I like best in the picture, and then I'm adding to it in its own terms. And I learned a lot from th this particular picture. Next, please. 